LJ. LJ, LJ, LJ. I'm so confused. Back up on my bullshit. Back up on the scene. Done dealing with you. Don't know how to deal with me. Done fucking with you. Y'all, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, welcome. Hey, so today we are going to be reviewing Ready to Love Season 6 Miami Episode 8. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm just drinking on some water because I'm actually about to go out of town after this and I plan to be doing a lot of drinking, okay? So I'm just trying to properly hydrate myself, you know, so grab yourself something to drink and let's get into it. So let me just say first, I did not take any notes when it comes to this episode. Normally, I like to take notes to keep myself on track because I can go on rants and tangents and all of those things so i did not take any notes i was trying to multitask i was watching this while i was doing my makeup so i don't have any notes so i'm just going to be going off the top of the dome and i'm really only going to touch on the most important things i'm not going to go like literally scene by scene by scene okay so in this episode the men now have for one the power but they also have to introduce the women that they're interested in into a, a truth teller as tommy put it and so first up we have randall now when randall said he was introducing the girls to his ex-girlfriend i was confused at first because i'm like i and i'm i have exes that i'm still cool with we don't really like talk on a regular basis or anything like that but like if we see each other it's gonna be all love we're gonna be like oh what's up you know you know but like to be like introducing your exes to and i get it some people are better off as friends and that's how that whole thing rocks i'm not a, the person that feels like you can't be friends with your ex or you shouldn't be friends with your ex i don't believe in that i think that's actually a slightly immature mindset to have but the thing that i was questioning was how like what happened with this ex and how long ago is this ex and ex because that's important as we know and as we see as the episode progresses so he introduces the girls to his ex-girlfriend and the ex-girlfriend tells us that it's been a long time since they kicked it and the reason why they stopped kicking it was because they realized like what are we doing like we are better off as friends like this is insane and i feel like in those situations and instances like that's when you know like it really is a platonic friendship and it ain't really no going back you know what i'm saying he asks the ladies to tell them some goals that they have and I was so confused as to why Jamala started talking about Randall. And then later on, the girlfriend had said, like, you know, that was a red flag. Because when I asked her about her and her goals, she started talking about you, you, you. And it's like, yeah, girl, I was literally, as I was doing my makeup, watching this, I'm like, so I, because, you know, I have to talk out loud, okay? I'm a, I'm an out loud thinker. Some people call it talking to yourself. That's not talking to yourself. I'm thinking out loud. My grandmother always told me it's not talking to yourself unless you talk back, okay? Like, unless you answering yourself and all of that. I mean, I guess I do that sometimes too. But I like to speak and think out loud. So when I was doing my makeup and I was watching it, I'm like, girl, she asked you about your goals. Why are you sitting here talking about Randall? I'm not going to go in order because I honestly don't remember the, the order. But um, Mike introduced Kayla and, of course, Brandy to a friend of his. And honestly, when Brandy first walked up, it, it wasn't given like the vibes that they normally give. Once Kayla left, though, that's when I feel like they was like bobbing more. But... I don't know when initial when brandy initially walked up it really seemed like it wasn't like how they normally be and i guess because you know kayla was right there or whatever the case may be i don't know but i, I peeped that the the friend says that she notices in mike the way that he acts and he's more shy and like but in a good way not shy like in a like he he you could tell that he really likes her and she brings something different out of him so that was cool for them he did say though that like you know he has an infatuation with kayla but he just needs to like see more or whatever the case may be and when kayla was saying like yeah i feel like we both waiting on each other to like to to express or make that move and it's like he should be the one doing it i really don't like that mike think that kayla's supposed to be like yo what's good i want you like what's up Samson introduces Sharice 
and Looney and Brandy to an ex of his. And these men with their exes, I'm like, my God, who knew so many men were so like super tight with their exes that when somebody is asking you to bring in a truth teller and somebody that's going to give it to you real that you would call on your ex. Like you ain't got no best friend, no homeboy, no brother, no cousin. Like it's all, all of y'all exes. Like that's a little strange. Sharice in this scene, she was kind of like irritating me because she like, I want him to see that I, I want to show him. Or she said, prove to him, or she said something like that, that I'm his strongest connection. And it's like, that you can't do that. Like, he needs to just, just y'all vibing and getting to know each other and going on dates. He needs to realize that. You can't convince him or prove to him or any of that stuff. And I never want any woman to operate from that place of trying to, like, prove yourself or show this or show that. And it's like, no, just just enjoy each other. And if he sees something in you and he see the beauty in you and the, the value in you and all of that stuff, then that's great. But I never want women to be like, I got to show myself. I got to prove myself. I got to show him that I'm his strongest connection. And it's like girl it's late it's over it's tired no i liked that looney said like i'm not really on that type of time i'm not about to be like doing that but i also feel like uh you know it was a little shady just a little shady but i liked that she said that because i feel like hopefully in that moment it gave sharice like a, a reality check or some sort of check that she needs to hear like you you doing a little too much and it's really not necessary and again with brandon and samsey what brandon and samsey who the hell is that girl with brandy and samson i feel like i just don't see a like i don't feel like they will really really for real for real be with each other or choose each other if it had not been for this show in the process like i really don't think that organically they would just choose each other but the ex-girlfriend says that she really likes Sharice for him. LJ, 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 LJ. I'm so confused as to why LJ. See, this is, at this point, I feel like this show is a joke for one. And I feel like the producers, again, are trolling us. When you are vetting these men out, y'all don't think like, okay, if somebody has just gotten out of a relationship, maybe they shouldn't be on this show nobody thought that because like i'm confused and then he set himself up for failure because why would you bring your ex-girlfriend whom you're still having sex with to to meet the ladies i'm confused a month ago like trinica said that was yesterday like please that's way too soon and then for you to be calling her in to be your truth teller and y'all basically are still having sex it's just like what are you doing did you did he honestly think that the women on that date would be like okay after this i really like you after i found out that you've been ha still having sex with your ex-girlfriend i really you really moved up to the top of my list absolutely never so that whole like date was a joke and i feel like at that point trinica and looney peeped and they was like look let's we need basically need to patch y'all back up and get y'all back together because you like this would this where you need to be and it, it just really made me feel like lj is not there for love he is there for whatever opportunity he can get that comes from being on this show period i think swayze was the last guy right i'm sorry like i said i ain't take no notes but swayze has his friend to meet katie in and you know the friend said like it was awkward and i feel like they should have talked about what happened between them before even getting to this point like, i don't know what day that took place with them with the friend but it's like surely y'all could have talked about it since then and you know clear the air or whatever the case may be prior to this but they did not so the friend picked up on like it was some sort of tension and awkwardness and that's just like mm. but then later on in the episode we see katie and mike somebody else and sharice get to get together and when mike said that katie and will ask a question and before you can even answer the question she'll ask another question i was like oh my gosh she do do that i peeped that that is really something that she does and i thought that was so funny also on this little date Sharice and Katie and get into it and I just am like so confused I thought that Sharice was a mean girl and I still feel like to a certain degree she kind of sort of maybe is but 
I was looking at Katie and like, yo, you you live for the drama. It's it's exuding. She is a drama queen. She likes chaos and mess and confusion. And at first, I thought she was just straightforward and honest and you know a blunt person because I feel like I am very honest, but I'm not brutal with it. Like I'm not gonna give you honesty that you are not ready for. I can gauge who could take it and who can't and who wants it and who doesn't, you know? But I feel like, I, at first I thought she was like just a blunt person, but now I see that like, no, she just liked the mess. She liked the mess. She likes mess. Her in that moment was just like, she was eating it up. She was living for it. And I was so confused watching them. I'm like, yo, y'all, y'all are grown women. Like y'all real grown real grown sitting here acting so childish and i just feel like i was just confused and i feel like majority of it does fall on katie because i feel like she kind of took it there and started it um and then i feel like sharice kind of met her where she was at but that was just i was like yo nah this is od childish so then we have uh the men's lounge and they talk about their dates and everything like that and ba i really thought after like everybody that what everybody said that katie was going to be in the bottom but it ended up being looney and trinika and i was so confused as to why trinika was so upset i'm always confused when people are angry that they are in the bottom or that they are being eliminated it's like this is par for the course this is the show that you signed up for at some point people will be x'd off the journey so like i don't understand when people get upset like trunica was so mad that she was in the bottom and she was so pissed off and it's like for me, if I was on this show and I was in the bottom, I wouldn't even be mad. Or if I was eliminated, I wouldn't even be mad. It's like, okay, my person is obviously not here. I'm not about to waste no time, like, and be all up in y'all face and y'all don't really like me. That's stupid. Like, time is precious and I ain't gonna waste mine. But it just makes me feel like, again, with these people that they are not really here and ready to love and here to find love. They are here to get whatever comes with the show. But we find out that basically i felt like looney knew she was getting eliminated because she was like um yeah it was nice to have come and meet these people and not, like she was basically saying her exit speech i feel like before he even told her that she was not ready to love so i feel like looney already knew but looney was the one who had to end her journey um and she was not ready to love which i feel like rightfully so i don't really feel like she had a real connection with any of the men there like i said she was giving off major like i feel anyway homegirl vibes um and Trinika gets to stay and I was happy once like the mood lightened up between her and Mike because she was very like upset and I just was like girl like relax every week somebody's gonna be in the bottom and sometimes it might be you and you might even be the one sent home chill out that was pretty much it for this episode of Ready to Love. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are not subscribed. Drop down in the comments. Let me know what you thought. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.